Good morning, e and M crew. I um, I wanted to go over with you this particular problem from the problem set I assigned you on Monday, the suggested problems. This is the, from the 2010 exam. It's question number one. I think this is the one you're, you may have more trouble with than, than the circuit, um, but let's go ahead and get to it. I'm gonna try to explain um, the reasoning behind the problems as I go through them. I'm still gonna try to meet this 15 minute time limit. Um, so let's go ahead and get to it. So we've got this charge of plus Q distributed uniformly along this um, quarter circle. And we're supposed to compare the voltage at points A, B, and C. Now if you remember, um, voltage from your formula sheet equals one over four pi epsilon naught times the sum of the charges over the distance from those charges, okay? Now, each of the charges that are distributed along this quarter circle is closest to, um, to point B. And so, therefore, since it's the shortest distance R, it'll have the greatest voltage at point B. You can also see that A and C are um, gonna have the same voltage because of their um, they're just basically mirror images of one another and therefore the, you know, the distance from C to this point and A to that point are the same and likewise A to that point and C to that point are the same. So they're going to end up with the same, um, the same amount of potential. Now the thing is we want to justify, make sure you do this step and you justify your rankings. Um, this is gonna be part of our justification, right? Um, basically, I, I'd say that um, because um, B is closer to the charge distribution it will have the strongest um, or the highest or the greatest potential, okay? And then I would also probably explain that uh, A and C are equidistant. Um, all right, so this problem goes on to the next page. Hopefully I have the next page, that would make good. There we go. Uh, so we're supposed to determine an expression for the electric potential at point P due to charge Q, okay? Now, we've already talked about the fact that the potential is due to the sum of all those individual charges divided by how far they are away from that point. Now notice every single little point along this quarter circle is the same distance from point P. And so when I do sum up those individual little DQs, those little pieces of charge, um, they'll actually end up all being the same uh, distance away and the total amount of charge will be, will be Q. So for part B, I'm just gonna end up with um, one over four pi epsilon naught times big Q over big R. Now they do actually put a positive point charge Q with a mass of M right there. So let me show that to you. Okay, so we take a little point charge, a little Q, we put it there. <clears throat> it's got a mass of M and it's released from rest. And we wanted to derive an expression for the speed of that point charge when it's very far from the origin. Okay, so I don't know, that should really leap out at you that, that we're talking about a conservation of energy um, because we just got done finding potential, right? This is V. And potential is energy per charge. And they told us how much charge the thing has. So we know, already know the energy per charge at that particular location. And then we put that much charge Q there. And so we'll be able to figure out how much energy it has. And so for part C, 
we could do a simple conservation of energy, right? The potential at the beginning plus the kinetic at the beginning plus any work done by external forces would equal the potential uh, at the end plus the kinetic at the end, okay? Now let's consider our, our, our initial and final conditions, right? Um, the object's at rest at the beginning, right? That means it has no kinetic energy. Um, electricity is a conservative force. We're not told of any frictional forces or anything like that. And at the end, at a very far, um, a point that's very far from the origin, we're gonna have no potential en energy anymore, okay? So we can just say that the potential at the beginning will equal the kinetic at the end. The potential at the beginning is equal to Q times V, right? If you look at your formula sheet, the, um, the potential energy equals Q times V. And that will equal our kinetic energy, which has always been one half MV squared. Okay. Now all we have to do is solve for V. All right, we multiply both sides by, well, first of all, I guess we should substitute, right? We know the voltage, so we, we ought to put that in there. And instead of one over four pi epsilon naught, I'm going to substitute K. All right, so I have, would have Q times K times big Q over big R equal one half MB squared. All right, now of course solving for V, I'm gonna to have to multiply both sides by two and divide them by M. So I'll multiply by two. I like to group my Q's together. That's a little K, not a big K. And then I'll divide by the mass and then I'll take the square root. Okay, that is my, that's my final answer. Always circle your answer so that your, your grader knows what the end result is and they don't have to guess. Okay, um, now on this dot below, we're gonna indicate the direction of the electric field at point P due to the charge Q. Well, so uh, a charge right here would have an electric field in this direction. And a charge right here on the opposite side would have an electric field in this direction. And I think you can see that the, the Y coordinates of, of those electric fields would actually end up canceling each other out. And the only electric field you would have would be along the positive X axis. Okay, I'll call that um, E sub X. Okay, so the contributions from, of course, if I put these two together, right, this would be twice as long, actually. But anyway, the contributions from both of these in the Y direction will balance each other out, and you'll just be left with a uh, electric field that's completely along the X axis. So how do we figure that out? Um, you know what, I, mean, I think I'm gonna need a little bit of lined paper for this one. Well, first of all, let's answer the question here. Let's just draw that and show that the electric field um, would be completely along the x-axis. Now they want us to take it to the next level and derive an expression for the magnitude of that electric field. Okay, so that's gonna take a little bit of calculus. And so and there's nothing that we haven't done before. So let's go back to this original expression here. And we know that, first of all, electric field from your formula sheet is equal to the electric force, and it's in the same direction, divided by the, the charge, right, the test charge. Of course, electric field is, um, I'm just going to list it as K, it's 1 over 4 pi epsilon not on your formula sheet. Um, so that would be Q times Q over um, R squared, and that would all be over Q. And so your electric field is K Q over R squared, okay? But uh, these charges, um, this charge Q is distributed along this entire length here. And so <clears throat> the electric field for the this little piece of charge is gonna be um, in a different direction than this little piece of charge, and it's gonna have different 
X and Y components. We're going to have to sum all those up. So we're going to have to break down this electric field um, into a bunch of little uh, segments and then add them all up together. Okay. So if, and again, we're just looking for E in the X direction. So E in the X direction would be all of this It would be kq over r squared times the cosine of whatever angle this is. Okay, so if I'm looking at this piece right here, there's a certain angle theta, which would also be this angle theta here. And so e in the x direction would be cosine theta. Okay, this is what we need to focus on. So let's let's try to derive or break this up into little pieces of electric field and then add them all together when we're done. K and R squared, they're gonna be constant, right? Because we're always dealing with the same distance with that um, quarter circle. And we need to break this up into little bits of charge, okay? Well, Let's look at that. So, so, in other words, I need this broken down into little tiny bits of, of, of DQ, okay? There's a little bit of charge on this part of the quarter circle, okay? Well, um, DQ is going to be the linear charge density times the little bit of length, right? Um, linear charge density is um, charge over length, okay? Now the length that we're dealing with here is the length of a semi, uh, sorry, a quarter circle. The length of, of a quarter circle is not two pi r, it's a quarter of two pi r, which is pi over two. Right, so lambda is actually 2q over pi. Okay, now little piece of length. Little piece of length. Um, well, we, we need to break up that, and basically what I'm talking about is a little tiny arc length. So my, my little piece of length, if you remember, um, theta is the arc length over r, okay? So if I wanted to find the little arc length, my little dl is going to be r d theta, okay? So I've got an expression for lambda, my linear charge density, and for, and for um, my, um, little itty bitty portion of the length, okay? And so that's gonna be 2q over pi for lambda and r d theta for, for my little piece of length, okay? And that'll give me my little piece of charge, all right? I'm gonna, exp I'm gonna put this in and substitute that in for dq. So I'll end up with k over r squared times the um, times 2q over pi times r cosine of theta d theta. I just rearranged this so that I could put my thetas and my d thetas together. And that would be my my little piece of my electric field in the x direction. Okay, now I can integrate this, okay? Um, these here, oh, this r cancels with that r, doesn't it? Sorry about that, guys. I can integrate this to get the entire, um, to get the entire electric field. Okay, and now look, my limits of integration, this is negative pi over 4, and this is positive pi over 4. 
So I'm going to go from negative pi over 4 to positive pi over 4. Everything that I put out here is a constant. So I, I will end up with my electric field in the x direction equals 2kq over pi times, I guess that was a big R, not a little r, times a big R. When I integrate the cosine, I get the sine. And I'm going to integrate that from negative pi over 4 to a positive pi over 4. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and substitute those in there. 2k q over pi r. Sine of pi over 4, that's the square root of 2 over 2. That's on your back of your formula sheet. And we're going to subtract away that, which would be negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay. Now when I subtract the negative, that's the same as adding a positive. If I have half of something plus something, that ends up being just the whole thing. So it's this whole thing is the square root of 2. And so my final answer will then be 2 square roots of 2 times k q over pi r. You'll probably get some partial credit for a lot of these steps along the way. For example, if you know what your limits of integration would be, that would probably be a partial point. Having a good expression uh, for the electric field in the x direction um, would probably be another point, and your substitution for q. I hope you guys found that helpful. If you have any questions about that, please join me for the conference call. Um, see your link in Schoology. One o'clock, I'll see you there.